Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm joining you from a recording tonight. That's because last night, um, when I was welcoming the new members in our group, for some reason, I was banned from um, creating any posts or making any comments from all Facebook groups. And this is um, apparently going to be going on until October 22. So seven days of me not being able to get in touch with you live. It's like, <laughs> I'm not used to it. It's like I'm having a separation anxiety from you guys, but um, we'll be able to get through this. So um, this is my solution for now. I'll do my um, lives, my, my VBA tasks um, recorded. So if you have any um, uh, questions about the task I'm going to talk about today, please post it in the comment section. I can still read them. I just cannot reply to them. So um, when my sister Christina or my sister V um, have time, um, I'll be asking them to um, post my response um, on my behalf, okay? So I hope you'll bear with me. Um, today's topic is about graphic design. I'm not a graphic designer, so my knowledge of graphic design is very limited, but uh, as a virtual assistant, I have been asked by almost all my clients to do graphic design, um, whether if it whether it's for a an event poster or for a handbook, an employee handbook, um, what else? Um, poster handbook or a PowerPoint presentation. Um, uh, what else? But those are the top three that I can think of. There's also um, org charts. Um, so yeah, um, I think it's one of the things that um, we cannot avoid. Thank God there's now Canva <laughs> because be before Canva, I used to do all these things but, um, through PowerPoint presentation or worse, Word document. But with Canva, there's now, um, what do you call this? Um, aesthetics. <laughs> in, in um, charts and things that I create. So um, there goes my first tip for you. Make life easy for you. Use Canva. If you don't have the, you know, if you don't really dabble in uh, Adobe or things on, or on software that's meant for graphic artists, if you're like an ordinary human being like me, <laughs> um, head on to Canva, create your own account and start, you know, um, creating things there, um, either it's, whether it's for your Facebook page, your Facebook cover, or um, a, a Facebook post that you want to do, um, just to let people know what you do as a virtual assistant or whatever. If there's an event, create a, a, an invitation for your child's next birthday or whatever it is, you know, a, a, an event that you're planning for a relative or celebrate a special occasion. Um, but uh, I guess the, the tips that I'll just give to you right now are the best practices, the things that I've learned. I've made mistakes before, um, but what I'm going to share with you um, are tips that will help you save time. So before I would get really excited, um, even if it's not my talent, believe it or not, I'll get excited whenever I'm to create an event poster. Okay, I get excited about it. Um, but my tip is before you use the app, Make sure that you have all the information that you need. If it's an event poster, you should know the date, time, place, who it's for, if there's a theme, what they need to wear, uh, what, what, will, what time it will start. Um, if there's a theme, uh, uh, how do they RSVP, who's the contact person, and things like that. Um, make sure you have them all in paper because the last thing that you want is after you've spent time, fixing the layout, making sure everything is nice, the text looks very nice against the graphics and the color and everything. And then when it's time to upload it, you've uploaded it on the company Facebook page or wherever it is, you'll notice, oh my gosh, you don't have the venue there or, oh my goodness, the contact person is not included or you know, all those things. You don't want the crucial information to be missing from it. So um, I urge you to write down all the information in a piece of paper or in a document on your computer, check that, you know, you have all the information there. And if this is something that you do uh, more than once a year, you know, then I suggest that you have a template for it so that when the time comes, you have to create another poster of the same type or another graphic design of the same type. You just, you know, you have a checklist and 
you can make sure that you don't forget any elements, right? Um, what else? So um, if it's an event poster, uh, used to be our SVP email address, phone number, but now you can you have an option to just put a QR code there so that people can scan it with their phone. And then that when they scan it, it will be taken, they will be taken to a page where they can fill up the form themselves. Okay, so much easier. That's just an option. Um, and then there's been uh, times when I've been asked to um, organize Christmas parties for my client here in Australia. I'm always in charge of you know, their Christmas parties there every year for the past five years. Um, they're quite generous with their employees. So sometimes they're located in a, because they're located um, two hours away from Sydney, they would bring the employees to Sydney, the city, and uh, to have a nice time there away from the farm. So they would organize transportation. So um, if the people need to know about, you know, a bus collecting them from one point and bring them to the venue, then you have to include that in the poster so that they'll know when the time comes, when the day of the event comes, oh, okay, I have to be at, on this point at this time so that I won't get left behind with the bus, all right? Or if they're driving, let them know where the parking um, spaces are. Is it on the street? Or is there a parking basement under the building where the event will be? Or is there a, a paid parking nearby? So those details, just put yourself in the shoes of the person who's going to attend the event and imagine you're the one receiving this information. And of course, it will be so helpful if you have all the information there, you know what to wear, you know, you know, you know what to expect in that event, if food is going to be served, or is it just going to be cocktails so that when you get there, you'll know if uh, you have to have eaten something heavy before going. Okay. So um, that's the one thing for um, for events. You can get very creative. Actually, you're encouraged to be creative if it's um, a social event. But if it's a corporate event, if it's a training, then of course you have to think of a more corporate feel for it. it has to be neat, and the, uh, the the text has to be easy um, to read against the background. So, for example, you have a red background. Don't use orange okay um use contrast so if you have a red background use a white font or a yellow font so that it really stands out in front of the of the of the color the, the field or the background okay and then if you can use you know you what you can do if you really have no skills in this and you're the only person who can do it is look for inspiration so go to google look for sample um, invitations there. So for example, you want to create a training invitation. So just type training invitation sample on Google and then click on the images section and then it will come up with pages and pages of sample invitations that you can copy from. You can look at the element, how it's positioned. You can do it in PowerPoint. You can do it in Canva or yeah, basically look for inspiration. Doesn't matter if it's not originally your concept. What's important is that you're able to produce the poster and that the people who are supposed to read it are able to see it and get the information. That's the important thing. Okay, so this is for events. Um, what if it's something um, like social media posts for your client? If your client is a coach or um, has a business and wants to maintain, a, is smart enough to know that he or she needs to maintain an online presence for the business because um, I don't know about you, but when I'm looking for something, I either find them on Google or on Facebook and I look for the reviews, what pictures do they have? So, um, you know, um, uh, a smart business owner would make sure that they have their Facebook page updated, okay? Um, so you have to keep in mind if it's a company social media post, then it's best to use branding, right? Um, especially if it's corporate, okay? So like with digital service, if you look at the posts, um, like inspirational posts or surveys that I have in my page, um, they use the um, my brand colors, which are light blue, dark blue, and white, right? Um, I also have my brand fonts, um, which are Nimbus and Palatino. And then um, I also have my logo there. So if you're going to be creating Facebook 
oh sorry social media posts um canva is like your one-stop shop for that so if you don't have canva and that's one of the things that you know you're going to do for your client go and create a free canva account now um and then you know start playing around with it okay um and then I forgot what a paid account in Canva does. I forgot what additional features it has. Um, but if you're going to be working with a client and doing social media posts for them, uh, I advise you to upload your client's um, marketing collaterals in Canva before you start making anything. So put their logos there, all the different kinds of logos, logos with text, just the logo, logo with transparent background, things like that. And then upload the colors, um, make, you find out what the exact hex code is for the theme colors so that you know what the brand is, it's the right shade of orange or whatever, right shade of brown or black. And then uh, the fonts, um, ask for the file of the fonts if in case it's something that's not available in Canvas library of fonts so that everything that you produce for that client, the branding is uniform. And why is that important? When the audience of that client sees this set, this brand, they'll know, ah, that's from this person. Okay, so it's for consistency. So that's, um, it doesn't take a lot of time. Oh, also, um, aside from that, also upload photos of your client because sometimes their posts, it would be good if they, their photos are in their social media posts so that the people, their audience will always um, recall their brand along with their face or their personality. There, so that's my tip. If you are good with um, graphic design, if you use Adobe, then good for you you'll have more flexibility, you know. Um, but I, I, I used to ask my son to remove the background from certain pictures, for example, my profile pictures or my client's pictures so that I can make a poster out of that. But I recently discovered that removing a background is now a feature also available in Canva and that's a big, big help, okay? Um, what else? Um, have all the information at hand. I strongly suggest Canva. If your client does not like the, the branding styles available in Canva and the client does not have his or her own brand colors yet, another option is to buy done-for-you templates. There are designers there who create templates. For example, they have this, it's like a set template with a color scheme, with the fonts, um, and it's already set up like, um, what do you call that, like a mock-ups of what it would look like on a, on a calling card, what it would look like on a letterhead or a PDF file or a social media post. They have it all in a package. They sell the, those things. So that's something that you can offer to your client. And then you just have to tweak it um, depending on the content that you want to put in there, where, whether it's an inspirational quote or, you know, if it's a guide or a step-by-step -step guide or a routine, whatever that your coach, oh, sorry, your client wants to put in that content. That's another option. So as virtual assistants, we have a lot of options when it comes to graphic design. <laughs> Even if we are, um, our talents are limited. If um, Then another option that we can think of is we can ask, someone we know, a friend or a family member who can have a look at it and give us, you know, their feedback on what we've done so far, or if they can have a go at it and do it for us for free. <laughs> um, final option is you can ask your client to outsource this work to someone else who has the talent for it. Okay, so meaning you don't have to do it. Um, your client will pay someone else to do the graphic stuff. All right, so that way, you don't have any pressure <laughs> to come up with beautiful stuff, okay? Especially if it's a rush thing. All right, okay, so I hope uh, that was helpful. It's um, 15 minutes. Um, if you're watching this um, and you picked up something new, please let me know. If you're using Canva, what are your favorite elements in Canva? What have you discovered lately? Um, I myself, I use both Canva and I also bought uh, a template from um, virtual virtual marketing stars I think that's what they're called the name of the owner is Russian sounding Verbanova Katya Katya Verbanova I think 
So I got it from her. It's a it's a monthly subscription, and every month she releases a pack of different kinds of documents. And then I upload that on Canva. And then I just apply my style. There's a button on the left panel of Canva that says style. And along with the preset styles of Canva, that's free. I've also that it also includes my branding. All right. So if I click my branding there under the style button, all the documents in that file can be changed to my color. Even if originally it's blue and orange, if I click the style button and I select my branding, it will all of it will change to dark blue, light blue, white, which are my brand colors. It's just so easy. <laughs> so yeah, so that's one option. Okay, life doesn't have to be hard. Um, so <laughs> let's find ways to, to solve our problems. If something is beyond our skills, beyond our capabilities, we always ask for help. That's what makes a good virtual assistant is to be resourceful. Okay, so um, let me know in the comment section if you learned anything new about Canva or if there are any tricks that you'd like to share with the community about making graphic design. Um, please do share them here. If you're, of course, you'll be watching. It's not live. So <laughs> um, yeah, so if you learned anything from the community so far, again, the group is open for invitation to your friends and your family. And tomorrow I'll be doing a recorded <laughs> webinar on, or maybe it doesn't have to be recorded. You can join me on Zoom. Okay, so I'm going to ask my sister V to upload the Zoom link so that we can all be together in a Zoom uh, session tomorrow evening at 8.30. Um, we will be talking about self-limiting thoughts. Mm. <laughs> you better watch out for that. So I'm not going to say anything more about it. I'll just leave you intrigued about tomorrow's topic, but I hope You'll be there, you'll be ready with your drinks, hot chocolate, water, soft drinks, wine, beer, whatever it is, bring it with you. Bring your spouse with you or your teenager because this is something for everyone. You can share the link with your friends, Marcada, who could use um, some, you know, some, uh, what do you call this? Some Something healthy for the mind and the heart and the soul. Okay. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for sticking around. Have a great weekend and give your family a hug. Bye.